What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mommy's Little Trash Cast. My name is Greg Ezel. This is No Man's Sky, and we're playing it on PlayStation. Yeah, so we're going to play a little No Man's Sky on PS4 today. I want to show you guys what this game is all about. You've heard the hype for it, yet... Are you fucking kidding me? Where did that thing just go? It's gone. It's gone. What a great way to show gameplay. Show fucking something just disappear right in front of you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so... What's up everyone? My name is Greg Ezel. This is No Man's Sky on PlayStation. And you are watching it on Mommy's Little Trash Cast. Now, hopefully nothing else will pop in or out while we're playing. But you've heard the hype already about this game. Uh, you've probably heard people shit all over this game. Ah, uh, balls. Uh, so we're, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little bit. I'm gonna talk about what I like about it. Gonna talk what I don't like about it. Gonna tell you why I bought it, what I think about it. Uh, not necessarily a review, but if you're on the fence, hopefully you're, you can watch this and you can say to yourself, hey, that, you know, I actually, that's something I think I would enjoy or, you know, hey, that's something that looks terrible. So the game was released uh, August 8th, 2016. It already released to a lot of controversy around it. If you haven't been following, basically what happened is when it was released, Jim Sterling had a uh, Jim Pressions video about it. Didn't enjoy the game, which is fine. And, you know, not everyone has to enjoy every game that comes out but unfortunately the no man's sky community has been has reacted so negatively towards what other people but and the fucking thing is back but if i go back over there it'll probably disappear again you know we're gonna land here and we're gonna see if it disappears again it did what why is it ah that's frustrating that is incredibly frustrating so what that or, uh, orb, I guess you can call it. What Basically what that is, is that's emerald, and that is a type of uh, material that you can mine and you can sell, and apparently that one shouldn't be there, but it is there. I don't know. I don't know. So, Jim Sterling put out his, his impressions video, as he calls it, Jim Pressions. And he didn't enjoy the game. And that, and so what happened was the No Man's Sky community basically threw a shit fit over it. They, you know, DDOS'd his website. So they took his website down when he had his written review. You know, they, they do their dislikes and whatever. And this has been a thing with this community. Oh, nice. I got it right. So this has been a thing with this community. Uh, when the game was... When it was announced that the game was going to be delayed in two months. It was only going to be released two months. I mean, delayed for two months. The community went fucking bananas. And what I mean by that is... Kotaku... The reporter for Kotaku, his name's escaping me. I think it's like Jason Schreiber. Could be wrong, but it's... I believe I'm close. He, from his sources, said, No Man's Sky is not going to come out in June 2016. It's going to come out in August 2016. And the No Man's Sky subreddit went fucking bananas. They were sending him death threats. They were sending Hello Games death threats. The people fucking making the game itself. Sending them death threats. Because their game was going to be released. Oh, I already discovered this one. So I watched Jim Sterling's video. I watched Kind of Funny talk about the video. Uh, talk about the video game. Talk about No Man's Sky. Neither of them really seemed to enjoy it. Which is fine. Told myself, look, I'm not going to get this game. Uh, clearly it looks boring. It's not 
it's not for me. And it's obviously I bought it. So what changed? Well, I went to a friend's house on Sunday. Uh, we were recording a new Mommy's Little Trash Cast segment. It's called the Co-op Couch. And what that is, is I'm going to sit down with friends, family, people. We're going to talk. We're going to learn about them. We're going to learn their story. And we're going to play couch co-op video games. And why are we doing that? Because couch co-op is fucking awesome. Okay. Uh, I grew up with couch co-op. Uh, if you've been any fan of the channel, you know my thoughts towards couch co-op. It's one of my favorite things to do. I had a brother who was, you know, a year younger than me. So we grew up playing all this stuff. You know, this is this is what we love to play. Was couch co-op games, bubble bobble, all sports games. Um, Toe Jam and Earl. All, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, we're, we were doing couch co-op, the co-op couch, and we played our games, enjoyed them. Hopefully those will be up uh, in the next coming weeks. I am going to Disney on, uh, on Monday, the 22nd, so I'm going to try and get things up before then, but if it doesn't, just know that I was busy riding rides and acting like a like a 12 year old because that shit is gonna be dope so after we're done playing all our games he he was raving about no man's sky he's like you know it's a ton of fun there's really not there's no story behind it but you can basically you can do whatever you want you can you know, if you want to go find things, you know, obviously go explore. You can stay on a planet for 10 minutes. You can stay on a planet for 10 hours. It's really all up to you. So I played it, immediately fell in love with it. I am someone who does not need a narrative-driven story. Uh, I, I mean, if you know anything about my gaming past or my history or if you're friends with me on PSN, uh, PZL 56 x if you do want to add me for some strange reason. You know that I played the shit out of Destiny. So I'm okay with open-ended, open-world kind of, no, na no narration. I don't need a narrative-driven experience. And, you know, I, further, I, I always say that I am someone who did not enjoy The Last of Us. I didn't. Not, I just, it didn't, it didn't grab me the way I thought it would. I just, it just, to me, it wasn't fun. And that's okay. You know, I know people have, people absolutely love that game. Rave about it. What is this? Oh, I, oh, I can shut the lamp off. Rave about it thought it was like one of the greatest things you know to hit gaming in a long time it got tens game of the year people still talk about it i was like mm, it was okay it didn't it didn't just it didn't do it for me and the funny part is people can't people just don't just don't agree with me on that and the crazy thing is is that's my that's my thoughts on um, on it. It doesn't. You don't have to justify why you like a game to me, and that's become the major issue with No Man's Sky. The community itself seemingly is comprised of a, of a bunch of piss babies that need to. Have, they need their game to be accepted by everyone, and when it's not. You know, they lash out in ways that makes the community look absolutely fucking terrible. Why can I not get out of this thing? There we go. So it makes the community look like absolute garbage. And as a video gamer, you know, we've already been through the bullshit that was Gamergate. Not going to go into it. Don't want to go into it. 
at all. But that shit went down. And now you have fans of a game calling out, not even calling out, but wishing death upon other people because they didn't like the game or they're upset that the people making the game chose to delay its release. So now let's talk about, so let's talk about No Man's Sky for a bit. No Man's Sky, what I'm doing right now is I'm buying a, an exosuit upgrade. So there's three things that you, that you have. Your exosuit. So in the beginning you start with, I believe, one, two, three, four. You start with about eight, eight or nine slots, maybe, maybe ten. You have your starship. Which comes with all those slots you see there. Uh, this is my starship from the beginning. I have not upgraded my starship yet. I have found crash sites, but the uh, the ships that I have found, I don't like, so I'm not going to use them. And you have your multi-tool. Multi-tools in starships, you can find different ones throughout the universe. This, uh, These allow you to have more space. More slots are opened up. And the the object of this game, on its face, is to get to the center of the universe. Now, I say that, but there's no, at least to me, and I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, please feel free to tell me I'm wrong. On the face of it, there is no real direct way to get to the center of the universe so i've i've only been playing this game for hmm, maybe 10 hours maybe less than 10 hours and i've really tried to take my time with everything i've tried to make sure that i am doing due diligence in terms of planets so the first planet I was on, I renamed Pestopia, obviously, and it was full of animal life. I scanned all the animals, had a great experience on that planet. I went to uh, another planet, which I renamed Marshallopolis, in the Days of Yoria galaxy. So every planet is going to be named after a Days of Yoria creator, writer, contribute to war. The, after that, I went to a planet that my brother discovered. He named it Bertha. And now I'm in Pizland. And after I named it, I said I should call this fucking Pizney World. But I didn't. Because I'm a moron. So your whole objective... Your objective is to get to the center of the universe. Find out what that is. Apparently, before the day one patch, that could have been done in about 30 hours. Now, you have to make it your mission to get to the center of the universe. See, right now, I don't care about going to the center of the universe. I just want to explore. And that's where the game grabbed me. I don't need a game that will make a path incredibly linear. Although, that's okay, because I do love those games. But I don't need every game to be like that. This game drew me in because of the freedom that I'm allowed to do. So, I've been on this planet now. I've been on Piz Land for probably game-wise, maybe a couple hours. And there's been no sign of animal life at all. So this is a very resource-heavy planet. So right now, I'm mining Emerald. And I'm doing this be so I can sell it and I can hit up an outpost, I can sell it, I can get money, and eventually I'll upgrade whatever I need to upgrade. If I need to upgrade a warp drive, I can upgrade my warp drive. If I want to upgrade, or if I need to buy things to upgrade my ship or my uh, exosuit, I can buy that. Every, as you saw at that drop pod, every, every upgrade costs 10,000 units. 
So, there will be a point where an upgrade for my suit will cost 3,000, 300,000, I mean 300,000 units. And I need to be able to have that money. So, if I can farm all this stuff and I can fill up this... And I can fill these up, and then I can sell those. Well, we're going to do that. So that's what I like about it. So the freedom to do whatever I want is incredibly enjoyable to me. So what don't I like about it? Well, there's, there is actually a bunch that I don't like about it. The inventory screen is a disaster, and I'm going to show you why. So right now you can see that I have an upgrade, I have a life support upgrade, and what this does is it increases available energy within user life support systems. So basically it extends my life support. The problem is that your upgrades take up your inventory slots. So if you look at if you look at my multi-tool, I had I had one slot available and I used it on Beam Focus Sigma. What this does is it allows for faster mining. If I take this off Mining things such as emerald, such as gold, is can take a long time. And it's kind of a pain because it's a little bit of a slog to just sit here and wait for things to, to break off of the rock. But the problem... The problem is, is that you are so limited in the beginning with inventory slots that you don't know you don't know what to do because you will pick up a ton of blueprints for everything let's just real quick um, I wish I could show you all right so I have an open slot here this is all the technology that I can create when I have all the resources all of this technology takes up an inventory slot so I have to fit in the beginning I ha I will have to figure out what is more important is mining more is a focused mining be more important to me or is a focus resource gathering be more important to me when I'm cutting down life forms plants things like that also what is really super annoying is that in combat you need to go into your inventory to replenish your replenish everything so if you're in a fight let's see if we can find some uh sentinels and fight them there's one what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna waste all of my ammo so i can show you exactly what it's like how cumbersome it can be when you're fighting something, even if it's something small. And mind you, this this also happens when you do ship battles as well. So you're fighting ships and you're trying to reload everything. And you know what? Let's uh, I don't, I don't want to dismiss. So I'm fighting this thing, right? Oh, so it's. So I'm fighting this thing. Oh, it's shooting me. Oh, I gotta. I ran out of. I ran out of fuel. So while I'm in the fight, right, I have to go in and do that. So now, the thing is with it's, even with these, look, there's not one. There's multiple, and they can send more. You can see in the by the bolt caster ammo is where is like a, a GTA style. Uh, like warning system so the more that gets filled up the more bolt, the more sentinels are going to come and attack me. I was hoping I was hoping that they would be like the sentinels from X-Men because that would be fucking awesome just big ass robots coming down to just take you out now that would be cool but unfortunately they're not they're just those little floaty robots and uh that is incredibly, incredibly horrible. Uh, to allow, to have your users do that while you're in space combat, something they touted. 
you know, Hello Games said that you will be able to do space combat. And unfortunately, they t they made that design decision. And it makes space combat unfun. I, I don't find space combat to be fun. When I was at my friend's house, he is further along in the game than I am. So he was able to at least do space combat. I mean, I could do it now, but I would get my ass kicked. It's not... It's just... It's an un... It's just not a fun experience right now with space combat because they... Because they did that design decision. It's just a... In my eyes, it's just a poor decision to either make you need to reload, uh, make you replenish, which I get because that's part of your inventory management, but to not pause the game while that happens is insane to me. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. So one of the things I do like, so what is, so is there a story here? Well, no, and yes. And what I mean by that is you, you go to different planets. And when you go to different planets, you learn things about the different races within those planets. What is that that I'm getting? It doesn't matter, it's full. So in this solar system, the alien life forms that live here are called the Gek. And in the Gek, uh, and in this system, you're able, as you've seen so far, you are able to learn about who you're able to learn who these Gek are. So I'm learning their language. I'm learning their backstory. Um, when you meet with traders, you're able to. When they speak to you, you're able to understand what they're saying. And we'll go see if we can find a new trader in this, you know, in this playthrough. This is going to be my only playthrough. I don't believe that a game like No Man's Sky is a great multi-episode Let's Play game. Because unless you, unless you have an objective like, hey, we're going to, today we're, you and I are going to go fly into a black hole, or we're going to fly into the sun, or we're going to fly into the the center of the universe. Most of it is going around doing exactly what I'm doing. And to me, who watched someone else do this, I found it, I, I just didn't find it engaging enough. It's not a game like Stardew Valley where you can watch it, but it's engaging enough that you can enjoy it. And like I said, that's all preference because now that I'm playing it, I really am enjoying it. I really, I truly am enjoying it. I'm not going to answer the question if I believe it's a $60, if it's a $60 game because $60 to people, you know, $60 to one person is not a lot of money while to another person, it is a lot of money. I'll tell you this. I was lucky enough to trade in about $180 worth of stuff at GameStop. So I didn't pay anything for this game. Is it a $60 game? That's for you to, that's for you to watch, for uh, you to read reviews, and for you to decide. I can't make that decision for you, and I'm not going to make that decision for you. I can only tell you that I am enjoying it despite its flaws, and it is flawed, and we've talked about those flaws. So, I got off on a tangent, shockingly. The Gek have their own language, and from what I gather, every alien species in this game have, has their own language. So when you go, when you land on a planet, you saw it already, you can find ruins, and you learn more about the 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 alien uh, backstory, you, you learn about their race's backstory, their species backstory. You can visit outposts within that. Alright, now my inventory's full. I was, wait, I was waiting for that to come up. So you can visit outposts within that, within those. So you learn more about these You learn more about these people. You learn more about their language. 
And that so far has been the most interesting thing that I have found. So I think we're done on this planet. I think we're done. And before I end this let's play, it's already been about 25 minutes. It feels like I've been playing this game for 25 seconds. And that's another thing that I have really been enjoying about No Man's Sky. I don't feel like it's a slog to play at all. And like I said, that's just me. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys taking off, show you what a little bit of space looks like. I mean, let's hit up some space combat. The worst that's gonna happen is we die. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. So we're flying out of the galaxy, doo, 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 flying out of the atmosphere. All right, welcome to space. So let's see. So Rich Onia, been there. And there's a, so there's another planet that we haven't found. But I just want to show you space combat real quick. We can fight this thing. Alright, so we can. So as you can see, they send out their lasers. Go downstairs, please. I'll be right there. No, we're not doing water balloons. You can see on the photo on the photon cannon. So they overheat. You know, our shield as our shields go down. I don't even know what where what's shooting us. So boom, our shield's down, right? So to do to fix our shield, we have to go in while we're flying, put our shields back up, and then continue on. It is so cumbersome to do this. It is such a pain in, you know, such a pain in the ass that it, to me, and like I said, I can only speak to my, for myself, to me, this is incredibly, uh, this isn't fun for me, especially because I apparently am terrible at flying my, my own fucking spaceship. So now my shield's down, taking, I'm taking critical damage. While I'm getting the shit shot out of me. And there you go. So while I'm in my menu screen, I'm still getting fired upon. And I'm still... Uh, and I'm still getting, getting killed. So... Friends, this was No Man's Sky. Um, I apparently need to go back to wherever I died. Right, so apparently I need to go back here. So that's my grave. I need to go back there, pick up my inventory. Because apparently you do drop it when you die. Um, so that was No Man's Sky. I will have another video talking about the hype machine and the hype culture behind it uh, and behind this uh, this game and how it can really like devastate, maybe not devastate, but it can really put a black mark on the community itself. If you liked the, vi the video, please leave a like, share, subscribe to Mommy's Little Trashcast. We have a bunch of Let's Plays coming up. Like I said, I will be gone all next week. Uh, the 22nd to the 26th, but I'm hoping to have some some videos up for you and, and scheduled in the meantime, so hopefully you won't miss me, and thank you guys very much. Uh, Bree and I have enjoy, enjoyed the support, and we will see you next time.
What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mommy's Little Trash Cast. My name is Greggy Zell. This is No Man's Sky, and we're playing it on PlayStation. Yeah, so we're going to play a little No Man's Sky on PS4 today. I want to show you guys what this game is all about. You've heard the hype for it, yet... Are you fucking kidding me? Where did that thing just go? It's gone. It's gone. What a great way to show gameplay. Show fucking something just disappear right in front of you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so... What's up, everyone? My name is Greg Ezell. This is No Man's Sky on PlayStation. And you are watching it on Mommy's Little Trash Cast. Now, hopefully nothing else will pop in or out while we're playing. But you've heard the hype already about this game. Uh, you've probably heard people shit all over this game. Ah, uh, balls. Uh, so we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to play a little bit. I'm going to talk about what I like about it. going to talk about what I don't like about it. going to tell you why I bought it, what I think about it. Uh, not necessarily a review, but if you're on the fence, hopefully you're, you can watch this and you can say to yourself, hey, that, you know, I actually, that's something I think I would enjoy or, you know, hey, that's something that looks terrible. So the game was released uh, August 8th, 2016. It already released to a lot of controversy around it. If you haven't been following, basically what happened is when it was released, we're going to talk, we're going to learn about them, we're going to learn this story, and we're going to play couch co-op video games. And why are we doing that? Because couch co-op is fucking awesome. Okay. Uh, I grew up with Couch Co-op. Uh, if you've been any fan of the channel, you know my thoughts towards Couch Co-op. It's one of my favorite things to do. I had a brother who was, you know, a year younger than me. So we grew up playing all this stuff. You know, this is this is what we love to play. was Couch Co-op games, Bubble Bobble, all sports games. Um... Toe Jam and Earl. All, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, we're, we were doing couch co-op. The co-op couch. And we played our games. Enjoyed them. Hopefully those will be up uh, in the next coming weeks. I am going to Disney on, uh, on Monday. The 22nd. So, I'm going to try and get things up before then. But if it doesn't, just know that I was busy riding rides and acting like a like a 12 year old because that shit is gonna be dope so after we're done playing all our games he he was raving about no man's sky he's like you know it's a ton of fun there's really not there's no story behind it but you can basically you can do whatever you want you can you know, if you want to go find things, you know, obviously go explore. You can stay on a planet for 10 minutes. You can stay on a planet for 10 hours. It's really all up to you. So I played it immediately. Jim Sterling had a uh, Jim Pressions video about it. Didn't enjoy the game, which is fine. And, you know, not everyone has to enjoy every game that comes out. But unfortunately... The No Man's Sky community has been, has reacted so negatively towards what other people, but, and the fucking thing is back. But if I go back over there, it'll probably disappear again. You know, we're going to land here and we're going to see if it disappears again. It did. What? Why is it? Ah, that's frustrating. That is incredibly frustrating. So what that, or, oh, uh... Orb, I guess you can call it. What Basically what that is, is that's Emerald. And that is a type of uh, material that you can mine and you can sell. And apparently that one shouldn't be there, but it is there. I don't know. I don't know. So Jim Sterling put out his, his impressions video, as he calls it, Jim Impressions. And he didn't enjoy the game. And that... And so what happened was the No Man's Sky community basically 
threw a shit fit over it. They, you know, DDOS'd his website. So they took his website down when he had his written review. You know, they, they do their dislikes and whatever. And this has been a thing with this community. Oh, nice. I got it right. So this has been a thing with this community. Uh, when the game was... When it was announced that the game was going to be delayed in two months. It was only going to be released two months. I mean, delayed for two months. The community went fucking bananas. And what I mean by that is... Kotaku... The reporter for Kotaku, his name's escaping me. I think it's like Jason Schreiber. Could be wrong, but it's... I believe I'm close. He, from his sources, said, No Man's Sky is not going to come out in June 2016. It's going to come out in August 2016. And the No Man's Sky subreddit went fucking bananas. They were sending him death threats. They were sending Hello Games death threats. The people fucking making the game itself. Sending them death threats. Because the game was going to be released. Oh, I already discovered this one. So I watched Jim Sterling's video. I watched Kinda Funny talk about the video. Uh, talk about the video game. Talk about No Man's Sky. Neither of them really seemed to enjoy it. Which is fine. Told myself, look, I'm not going to get this game. Uh, clearly it looks boring. It's not, it's not for me. And it's obviously I bought it. So what changed? Well, I went to a friend's house on Sunday. Uh, we were recording a new Mommy's Little Trash Cast segment. It's called the Co-op Couch. And what that is, is I'm going to sit down with friends, family, people. Fell in love with it. I am someone who does not need a narrative-driven story. Uh, I, I mean, if... You know anything about my gaming past, or my history, or if you're friends with me on PSN, uh, PZL56X, if you do want to add me for some strange reason. You know that I played the shit out of Destiny. So I'm okay with open-ended, open-world kind of, no... Nah, no narration. I don't need a narrative-driven experience. And, you know, I, further, I I always say that I am someone who did not enjoy The Last of Us. I didn't. Not, I just, it didn't, it didn't grab me the way I thought it would. I just, it just, to me, it wasn't fun. And that's okay. You know, I know people have, people absolutely love that game. Rave about it. What is this? Oh I, oh, I can shut the lamp off. Rave about it. Thought it was like one of the greatest things, you know, to hit gaming in a long time. It got tens. Game of the year. People still talk about it. I was like, mm, it was okay. It didn't. It didn't just, it didn't do it for me. And the funny part is, people can't, people just don't, just don't agree with me on that. And the crazy thing is, is that's my, that's my thoughts on, um, on it. It doesn't, 